time to register an oath that I'll never have my hair cut again. Why, because I've just been cropped for the militia. And I was particularly emphatic in my instructions to the hairdresser only to cut the ends off. You must have thought I meant the other ends. <laughs> never mind, I shan't meet anybody to care about so early. Eight o'clock, I declare, I haven't a moment to lose. Fate is placed with the most punctual, particular, and peremptory patterns, and I must fulfil my destiny. Open locks, whoever knocks. Good morning, Mr. Cox. I hope you slept comfortably, Mr. Cox. I can't say I did, Mrs. B. I can't say I did. I would feel much obliged to you if you could provide me with a more protuberant bolster, Mrs. B. The one I have seems to me to have about a handful and a half of feathers at each end, and nothing whatever in the middle. Anything to accommodate you, Mr. Cox. Thank you. Perhaps it would be good enough to hold this glass while I finish tying my cravat. Certainly. <laughs> Why, I do declare you've had your hair cut. Cut? It strikes me I've had it mowed. <laughs> Very kind of you to mention that I am sufficiently conscious of the absurdity of my personal appearance enough already. the effect of having one's hair cut. It's had to be quite tightly before. <laughs> Luckily I've got two or three others. <laughs> This one appears to me to all about rather less than the others, and now I'm off. By the by, Mrs. Bouncer, I wish to call your attention a fact that has been evident to me for some time past, and that is that my colds go remarkably fast. Well, Mr. Cox. It's not the case only with the colds, Mrs. B. I have lately noticed a steady and gradual increase of evaporation among my candles, wood, sugar, and my lucifer matches. Oh, Mr. Cox, you surely don't suspect me. I don't say I do, Mrs. B, only I wish you distinctly to understand I don't believe it's the cat. <laughs> Is there anything else you've got to grumble about, sir? Grumble? Mrs. Bouncer, do you possess such a thing as a dictionary? No, sir. Then I'll lend you one. And if you turn to G, you'll find grumble, verb neuter, to complain without cause. Now that's not my case, Mrs. B. And now that we're upon the subject, I wish to understand how it is that I frequently find my apartment full of smoke. Why, I suppose the chimney? The chimney doesn't smoke tobacco. Yeah. It's tobacco smoke I'm speaking of, Mrs. B. I do hope, Mrs. Bouncer, that you're not guilty of cheroots or cubas. Not I indeed, Mr. Cox. Nor partial to a pipe? No, sir. Then how is it that... Why, I suppose, yes, that must be it. Of the present, I am entirely of your opinion, as I have the most distant part of an idea what you mean. Why, the gentleman who has got the attics is hardly ever without a pipe in his mouth, and there he sits with his feet upon the mantel. The mantel, please? That strikes me as a considerable stretch. I have your imagination, Mrs. B, or the gentleman's legs. I presume you mean the fender or the hob. Sometimes one, sometimes the other. Well, there he sits for hours and puffs away into the fireplace. Then you mean to say that this gentleman's smoke, instead of emulating the example of all other kinds of smoke and going up the chimney, thinks proper to affect a singularity by taking the contrary direction? Yes. <laughs> and I suppose this gentleman you're referring to is the individual I invariably meet coming up the stairs when I'm going down, going downstairs when I am coming up. Why, yes. From the appearance of his outward man, I should unhesitatingly set him down as a gentleman connected with the printing interest. Yes, sir. 
and a very respectable gentleman he is. Well, good morning, Mr. Bouncer. Ah, uh, you'll be back at your usual time, I suppose, sir? Yes, nine o'clock. You needn't light my fire for me in future, Mrs. B. I'll do it myself. Don't forget the bolster. A half penny worth of milk, Mrs. Bouncer, would be good enough to let it stand. I wish the cream to accumulate. <laughs> He's gone at last. I do declare, I was all in a tremble for fear Mr. Box would come in before Mr. Cox went out. <laughs> Luckily, they've never met yet. And what is more, they're not very likely to. For Mr. Box works hard at the newspaper office all night and doesn't come home till morning. And Mr. Cox is busy making hats all day long and doesn't come home till night. So that I'm getting double rent for my room and neither of my lodgers is any the wiser for it. It was a capital idea of mine. That it was. Ah, oh, but I haven't an instant to lose. First of all, let me put Mr. Cox's things out of Mr. Box's way. becomes the foot of the bed for Mr. Box. Mm. Oh, people's taste do differ so. Oh. Does he? Well, you may inform the gentleman 
with my compliments that if he affects to the effluvia of tobacco, he'd better domesticate himself in some adjoining parish. Oh, Mr. Fox, you surely wouldn't deprive me of a lodger. Well, it comes to precisely the same thing, Dancer. Because if I detect the slightest attempt to put my pipe out, I at once give you warning that I shall give you warning at once. Oh, Mr. Fox. Do you want anything more of me? Oh, on the contrary, I've had quite enough of you. Well, Mr. Fox, well, if ever. What next, I wonder? Oh, it's extraordinary. The amount of trouble I always have to get rid of that venerable female. She knows I'm up all night, yet she seems to set her face against my indulgence in an horizontal position by day. <laughs> <sighs> now, let me see. Shall I have my nap before I swallow my breakfast? Or shall I swallow my breakfast? Take my breakfast before I swallow my nap? <laughs> I mean, shall I swallow my nap? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I've got a rash of bacon somewhere. I've been distinct and vivid recollection of purchasing a rash of bacon. Oh, here it is. Ah, and a penny roll. The next thing is to light the fire. Where am I losing? Oh, now, upon my life, this is too bad, the bouncer. By several degrees, this is too bad. I had a box full of these three days ago, and now there's only one. <laughs> oh, I'm perfectly aware that you can launch my colds and my candles and my sugar, but I did think, oh yes, I did think my lucifers would be sacred. Now I should like to ask any unprejudiced person or persons their opinion touching this candle. <coughs> In the first place, the candle is an article I don't require, because I'm only at home in the daytime. And I bought this candle on the first of May, Chimney Sweeper's Day, calculated it had last me three months, and is one week not half over, and the candle's three parts gone. Conscious of being 11 minutes and a half behind time, I was sneaking into the shop uh, in a state of considerable excitement when my venerable employer, a smile of extreme benevolence upon his aged countenance, said to me, Cox, I shan't be wanting you today. You can have our holiday. <laughs> Thoughts of grave sending back fair one shilling instantly suggested themselves, uh, intermingled with thoughts of uh, grand performance. 
Then came the, the two penny boats and the half penny on the buses. And, <laughs> in short, I, I'm quite bewildered. But I must have my breakfast first. That'll give me time to reflect. I've bought a muffin truck, so I shan't be wanting any dinner. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I forgot the bread. Hello. What's this? A roll, I declare. <laughs> Come, that's lucky. <laughs> now to light the fire. Hello. Who presumes to touch my box of gooses? Why, it's empty. I left one in there, I take my oath I did. <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> the fire is lighted. <laughs> but where's the good eye? On the fire, I declare. <laughs> and what's that on it? Bacon? <laughs> Bacon it is. There's a quiet coolness about Mrs. Bounce's proceedings that's almost amusing. She takes my last Lucifer, my coals and my gridiron to cook her breakfast by. No. No, I can't stand this. Come out of that. <laughs> Now for my breakfast things. Come in, is that you, Mrs. Bowser? You need me, right? Oh, I wonder how long I've been asleep. Oh, goodness gracious, my bacon. Hang <laughs> on. What's this? It's shot. Who's shot? Mrs. Bouncer's, I'll be bound. She thought to cook her breakfast while I was asleep. That was my coals. And my green iron. Ah, but where's my bacon? Oh, here it is. Now, upon my life, Bouncer, Gary. And shall I curb my indignation? Shall I falter in my vengeance? No! <laughs> so much for Mrs. Bell's breakfast, and now for me. And this time I shall lay my breakfast in. Come in, come in. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, my chop! <laughs> oh. <laughs> the bacon again! <laughs> oh, I can't stand this. <laughs> Zounds! Confound it, dash it, damn it! I've had quite enough. <laughs> 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 Who are you? <laughs> Who can that? Who are you? Well, what do you want here, sir? Who can that? Who do you want? <laughs> it's the printer. It's the app. <laughs> Go back to your attic, sir. My attic, your attic, sir. <laughs> Printer, I shall do you a frightful injury if you don't instantly leave my apartment. Your apartment? You leave my apartment, you contemptible that, do you? Your apartment? Ha! Ha! Come on like that. Look here, sir. Mrs. Bounce's receipt for last week's rent, sir. Dinner. Thieves! <laughs> Murder! This is Bouncer! Bouncer. <laughs> what is the matter? Instantly remove that banner. Immediately turn out that printer. 
Well, but gentlemen... Explain! Explain! <laughs> Whose room is this? Yes, woman! Whose room is this? Doesn't it belong to me? No! There you have it there, sir. It belongs to me. No! It belongs to both of you. Both of us? Oh. <laughs> Dear gentlemen, don't be angry. But you see, this gentleman only being at home in the daytime, and that gentleman at night. I thought I might venture until my little back second floor room was ready to... Uh... When will your little back second floor room be ready? Why, tomorrow? I'll take it. So will I. Excuse me, but if you both take it, then you may just as well stop where you are. True. <laughs> Look, sir, I spoke first. With all my heart, sir, the little back second floor room is yours, sir. Now go. Go? Poor, poor. Yeah. Don't quarrel, gentlemen. You see, there used to be a partition here. Then put it up. Nay, I'll see if I can't get that other room ready this very day. Now, do keep your tempers. Oh, oh. What a disgusting position. <laughs> well, you'll allow me to observe, sir. If you've not had any exercise today, you'd better go out and take it. <laughs> I shall do nothing of the sort, sir. Oh, very well, sir. Very well, sir. But don't let me prevent you from going out. Oh, don't flatter yourself, sir. Oh, that's my old sir. <laughs> Then you put that pipe away, sir. There. There. Oh. I shall retire to my pillow. Oh, pardon me, but I can't let anyone to rumble my head. Mm. Oh, bed, are you, sir? Can you fight? No, sir. No, then. Come on. Sit down, sir. I'll instantly vociferate police. <laughs> I say, sir. Well, sir? Although we are doomed to share the same room for a few hours longer, I don't see any necessity for our company to have a stroke, sir. Mm. Not at all. It's a process I should decidedly object to. And after all, sir, I don't have any violent animosity to you, sir. Nor I any rooted antipathy to you, sir. Oh, besides, it was always bound to fall. Exactly. Very well, sir. Very well, sir. Take the roll, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Do you sing, sir? Sometimes I join in a chorus. Well, then give us a chorus. Have you seen the Waterman, sir? Uh, no, sir, my wife wouldn't let me. Your wife? Oh, that is to say, my intended wife. Well, that's the same thing. I congratulate you, sir. Thank you. Uh, you need to disturb yourself. She, she won't come here. Oh, I understand. You've got a snug little establishment of your own here. On the sly, canny dog. No such thing, sir. I repeat, sir. No such thing, sir. Uh, my wife, uh, that is to say my intended wife, uh, happens to be the proprietor of a considerable number of bathing machines. Ah, where? At a favourite watering place. How curious you are. Not at all. Well... Well, uh, she is a proprietor of a considerable number of bathing machines, and thankfully the bathing season, which is a, a long one to be sure, uh, we see but little of each other. But now that that is over, I am daily indulging in the expectation of uh, being blessed by the, the face of my beloved. Are, are you married, sir? Me? Uh, why, uh, not exactly. Oh, a happy bachelor! Why? Not precisely. Oh, uh, a widow. No, not absolute. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me, sir, but I, I can't see how you could help being one of the three. Not help it? No, sir. Not you, nor any other man alive. Well, that may be. But I'm not alive. 
Uh, if you pardon me, sir, I don't like joking on such matters. Well, I'm perfectly serious, sir. I've been defunct for the last three years. Will you be quiet, sir? <laughs> if you won't believe it, I'll refer you to a very large, numerous, and respectable circle of disconsolate friends. My dear sir, my very dear sir, if there is some ingenious contrivance whereby a man on the eve of committing matrimony may leave this world and yet stay in it, I shouldn't be sorry to know. Oh, then I presume I'm not to set you down as being frankly attached to your intended. No, not exactly. Uh, well, at present, I, there's only one obstacle I can see to uh, doting upon, and that is I can't abide her. <laughs> oh, then there's nothing more easy, sir. Do as I did. I shall. What was it? Tell me, sir. Will you be quiet, sir? <laughs> Listen to me, sir. Three years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate the affections of a still blooming, though somewhat middle-aged widow at Ramsgate. Just was my case three months ago at Margate. Well, sir, to escape her opportunities, I came to the determination of enlisting in the booze or lifeguards. So did I. How odd. But they wouldn't have me. They actually had the effrontery to say I was too short. And I wasn't tall enough. <laughs> so I was obliged to content myself with the marching order. I enlisted. So did I. Singular coincidence. Well, I'd no sooner have done so than I was sorry for it. So was I. My infatuated widow offered to purchase my discharge on the condition that I needed to the opera. How long? Just my case. <laughs> I hesitated. At last I consented. Well, I consented at once. Well, sir, the date for the acne ceremony had been too near. In fact, too near to be pleasant. So I suddenly discovered that I wasn't worthy to possess her. And I told her so. <laughs> when instead of being flattered by the compliment, she flew upon me like a tyrant of a female gender. <laughs> I rejoined when suddenly something which passed me within an inch of the ear and shivered into a thousand pieces upon the mantelpiece. It was a slot basin. Oh, 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 I retaliated with a teacup. We parted and the next morning I was served with an address of action to breach of promise. Well, sir? Well, sir. Ruin stared me in the face. The action proceeded against me with gigantic strides. So I took a desperate resolution. I left my home early one morning with one suit of clothes on the back and another tied up in a bundle under my arm. I arrived on the cliffs. I undid my bundle, deposited the suit of clothes on the very verge of the precipice, took one look over the yawning gulf beneath me and walked off in the opposite direction. Ingenious creature. Uh, I think I begin to have some semblance of your meaning. So the suit of clothes was found and then? Exactly. And in one of the pockets of the coat, or the waistcoat, or, or the pantaloons, I forget which, was also found a piece of paper with these affecting farewell words. This is thy work, or Penelope Ann. Penelope Ann? Penelope Ann? Penelope Ann. Originally widow of William Wiggins. Widow of William Wiggins. Proprietor of bathing machines. Proprietor of bathing machines. And Margate. And Ramsgate. It <laughs> must be she. Well, then you, sir, you were Box, the lamented long lost Box. I oh, am. Yeah. And I was about to marry the interesting creature you so cruelly succeed. Huh? <laughs> you are Box. I am. I heard of it. I congratulate you. I give you joy. And now I think I'm going. Take the strong. It's not right there. I shan't lose sight of you until I return you to the arms of your intended. My intended? You mean your intended? <laughs> my intended? How can that be, sir? Yours? How can she be my intended now that I'm drowned? <laughs> but you're no such thing, sir. And I prefer returning you to the arms of Penelope Ann. Oh, I have no wish to be introduced to your intended. <laughs> my intended? How, should, how can she be my intended? You propose to her first. Well, that may be. 
Uh, <laughs> well, what of that, sir? Very well, sir. Very well, sir. You are much more worthy to possess her than I am, sir. Uh, allow me to then follow the generous impulse of my nature. I give her up to you. Benevolent being. I would not give for the world. Good morning, sir. Stop! A lamb, Or I shall cast off a lamb and assume the lion. Oh, poof! <laughs> An insult to my very face and under my very nose. You know the consequences, sir. Instant satisfaction, With sir. all my heart, sir. Mrs. Mrs. Bouncer! Mrs. 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 Bouncer! What is it, gentlemen? Pistols for two. Yes, sir. Stop! Thoughtless and imprudent woman, you don't mean to say that you keep loaded firearms in the house? No, sir. They're not loaded. Oh. Then produce the murderous weapons instantly. I <laughs> say, <laughs> sir, what's your opinion of Julie? Well, I think it's a barbarous practice, sir. So do I. To be sure, I don't so much object to it when the pistols are not loaded. No, that does make a difference. <laughs> and yet, sir, on the other hand, doesn't it strike you as rather a waste of time for two people to keep five pistols at another with nothing in them? No, no more than any other harmless recreation. Hark <laughs> you, sir, why do you object to marry Penelope? Yeah. Because as I've just observed, I can't abide her. You'll be happy with her. Happy? Me? <laughs> with the consciousness that I've deprived you of such a treasure? Oh, no, no, Cox. Don't think of me, Box. I shall be sufficiently rewarded with the knowledge that my dear Box is happy. Don't be absurd, sir. Then you don't be ridiculous, sir. I won't have her. I won't have her. <coughs> have it? Suppose we draw lots for the lady, eh, Mr. Cox? Fair enough, Mr. Box. Or, what say you to dice? With all my heart, sir. Dice by all means. That's lucky. Mrs. Bouncer's nephew left the pair here yesterday. He sometimes persuades me to have a throw for a trifle. And as he always throws sixes, I suspect they are good ones. <laughs> I have no objection at all to dice. I lost one pound seventeen and sixpence at the last Barnet races. To a very gentlemanly looking fellow with a peculiar knack for throwing sixes. I suspected they were loaded. So I gave him another half crown and he gave me the dice. Now <laughs> then, sir. Very well, sir. Shall you lead on, sir? At your dark, sir. The lower throw, of course. Wins for the air. Fair enough, sir. <laughs> Six hits. That's not a bad throw of yours there, sir. Sixes! That's a pretty good one of yours, sir. <laughs> Sixes! Sixes! <laughs> Sixes! Sixes! <laughs> That's not a bad pair of dice with your feet, sir. Oh, yours seem pretty good ones, sir. Suppose we chat. Sixes! <laughs> Sixes! 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 Oh, poo! It's perfectly absurd you, you're going on throwing sixes and that sort of way, sir. Well, I shall continue until my luck changes, sir. Oh, let's try something else. I have it. Suppose we toss the Penelope out. Just the thing I was going to propose to you. Now, where's my tossing chili? Where's my number sixpence? Ah, here it is. I've got it. Now then, sir. Heads win? Or tails lose, whichever you prefer. It's all the same to me, sir. Very well. Heads I win, tails you lose. Yes. No! Heads win, sir. <laughs> Very well, sir. <laughs> Heads! 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 <laughs> Hey, I do
rather tired of turning up it, sir. Couldn't you vary the monotony of our proceedings by turning up the occasional tail, sir? <laughs>
from witnessing the truly happy meeting between you and your intended. <laughs> uh, no, it's obviously for me to retire. I wouldn't dare disturb the rapturous meeting between you and your intended. My intended? You'll excuse me, sir, but our last arrangement was that you was your intended. No, yours! 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 Our lady's got out! Well, there's no mistake in that majestic person. It's Penelope Ann. You're intended. Yours! <laughs> Yours! Yours! <laughs> ah! She's coming upstairs. Shut the door! Cops! Mr. Cops! I've just stepped out! <laughs> so have I! Mr. Cops! Open the door! It's only me, Mrs. Bouncer! Only you? What happened to the lady? Gone! Upon your honour? As a gentleman? Yes, <laughs> and she's left a note for Mr. Cox. Then give it to me. Then open the door! Put it under! <laughs> Goodness gracious! Gracious, goodness, dear Mr. Fox, pardon my candour, but being convinced that our feelings, like our agents, do not reciprocate, I hasten to apprise you of my immediate union with Mr. Knox. Huzzah! Three cheers for Knox! <laughs> <laughs> in a remark. But the more I gaze in on your faces, the more I'm convinced that you're my long-lost brother. The very <laughs> observation I was going to put to you. <laughs> of course, of course. We don't know where we are. Of course. <laughs> but between you and me, I'm rather partial to this place. So am I. I begin to feel quite at home in it. All clean and comfortable. And I'm sure the mistress of it, from what I've seen of her, is very anxious to please. So she is, Box, and I hope that we stick by her. I agree. There's my hand upon it. Join with yours and agree the house is big enough to hold both of us, and then Box and Cox are satisfied. <laughs>